Good morning, YouTube. We're gonna do something we haven't done in quite a while on this channel. We're gonna take a road trip, and better yet, we're doing it to go buy me a new Ferrari. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this channel is all about this supercar ownership experience. And I'm very sad to say that the time has come for me to sell my GT40. I really, truly do love this car. It is absolutely incredible. But, well, this is kind of a channel about Ferraris mostly, and I feel like I should have a Ferrari. And there's a particular Ferrari that I've been lusting after for a while, and one of them came up, and well, I negotiated pretty hard and got a really, really good deal on it. And it's a bit unusual. So I'm not gonna tell you about it until we get into it. So I actually need to fly out to Miami where I'm going to pick up this Ferrari and then I'm going to drive it 1,450 miles back here to Texas. I am dumb because this is not going to be one of the more comfortable Ferraris. This is in fact a very uncomfortable Ferrari, but well, the things I will do for your entertainment. So off we go to Miami tomorrow morning. I am not gonna film in the morning because I'm going to be busy trying to get to the airport, but once we get there, we need to make the deal happen, pay the man and get the title and all that stuff, and off we go back to Texas. Oh, and by the way, we're also gonna go check out another Ferrari that we're looking at to buy for the dealership. So yeah, it's gonna be a busy day. Actually, it's a busy couple days because then I get back on Saturday and then Sunday, I fly out to go check out another Ferrari for the dealership. So man, I'm earning some frequent flyer miles. <laughs> All right, YouTube, off we go to Miami and let's check out this beautiful new Ferrari for me. Tomorrow. Okay, YouTube, let me tell you, I've had quite a long day. It is now 7.30 in the evening. Well, I bought the car, obviously, I'm in it and I need to drive 1,400 miles home. So I took a detour on the way to my buddy Scott's house. That's where I'm crashing for the night. Went and looked at a Ferrari F430 that we're interested in buying for the dealership. We'll see, I'm gonna make an offer on it. We'll see if he takes it. It's a pretty decent condition. The only concern I have is it's, it's not a super desirable color, but it does look pretty good. We, if you didn't notice, are in a 430 Scuderia. Yeah. This is my new toy. <laughs> So the GT40 needs to go bye-bye, and I'm gonna keep this thing for a little while. Now, here's where it's a little bit interesting. This thing only has 7,012 miles on it right now. Yep, that's it. And you might be thinking, wow, that was probably 300 plus thousand dollars, because that's how much scuds in this mileage cost. No, an interesting story behind the car. First, about 12 years ago, it got stolen and then while it was stolen it got wrecked and then it got rebuilt by the current owner and he's owned it for 12 years or so well the last owner i should say and fixed it up and it's actually in remarkably good condition i need some stuff like you know i don't have a headliner and the ppf is 10 years old and it's yellow it's horrible and that scares the crap out of me. I think we're gonna lose some paint. Oh, and by the way, the valves feel like they stick. They open and close, but they feel like they stick. God, these scuds sound so good when the valves are open. Anyway, all right, let's get to Scott's place, get some dinner. I gotta do a live stream, so this is on a Thursday. So those of you watching the live stream tonight, I'll see you in like an hour. The next day. Good morning, YouTube. We are on the road. I know it's loud in here. It's a scud, what can I say? We have uh, 17 hours and 20 minutes left. I'm supposed to arrive around midnight. Probably not gonna happen. We'll see how we do. Uh, I'm about three, four hours in. I've already had one gas stop. So far, traffic's been good. We're on, a turn, we're on the Florida Turnpike. Florida's really long. It takes forever. It's kind of boring. Actually, it's very boring, very flat. There's one thing that's kind of annoying about this car, which is actually not a function of the car. It's a function of what has been modified to the car, which is it has tint on the front windshield. I don't like tint on the front windshield. I like UV blockers, but tint is annoying. It makes it hard to see at night. And it's got like this weird haze effect. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but it's kind of hazy. So I think we're gonna have to remove that. We got to remove the PPF. 
PPF's really old. We'll show you all that. Once we finally get to Austin, I'll go over the car and show you everything. There's some stuff we need to do to it. It's not, it's not perfect. Another thing that's kind of annoying about these Scuds is the valves are a little bit aggressive on it. I mean, it's supposed to be a race car. Why don't they have the valves open a lot? I'll, I'll be honest, I'm glad it has valves right now considering I'm driving so far because like when, when you stop it, it's very loud. It's a great sound, but it's just loud. It, man, you can hear everything. You can hear all the valve train clatter. You can hear, you know, every rock, all that stuff kicking up into the fenders. So that part of it, I mean, it's race car shit. But alas, we have a long ways to go. Well, first traffic jam, slowdown, whatever you want to call it. It says 16 minute delay. Looks like it's increasing too. Meh. So that puts me in well after midnight. Probably make up some of my time, but I still haven't eaten breakfast yet. Uh, otherwise, the car seems to be doing pretty good. Drives great. Tires are old, they need to be replaced. They're garbage. They're like 10 years old. I don't really feel like going extremely fast with them. Oh, you know what's really frustrating is when you're driving a Ferrari and you go to the gas station and the little kid's like, look, mom, a Lamborghini. It's like, damn it. So close. So close. <laughs> Like, need to teach you the ways, kid. We're still in Florida, by the way. We still have like, I don't know, probably 400 miles in Florida or something stupid. It's a long ways to go. Well, crap, YouTube. We were on the highway. I was trying to get to my exit at the last second. So in cock block being changed lanes. And so I could not make my exit. So I had to go five miles until the next exit. And now we're on some back county road this is some backwater shit right here we'll get back on the highway in about five minutes let's probably add an extra 10 minutes to my already delayed drive and apparently we got an accident oh it's a big one lots of big vehicles oh that sucks camper fell off the road that sucks well back into business here we go well I'm just having crap luck today another accident total stop traffic this is like the fourth or fifth one today I don't understand how people suck this bad at driving like it's not that hard to go straight on a highway so now my ETA is not until like 1 30 in the morning so I don't think I'm going to be able to survive that. I'm going to have to stop for the night somewhere. So we're just going to get as far as we can. Probably, I'm guessing, stop somewhere in Louisiana. Maybe just barely into Texas. I don't know. We'll see. I wish I had something cool to talk about, but unless you like looking at, you know, tanker trucks and stop traffic, that's that's all you get. I guess I could show some stuff in the car. Look at, ooh, metal floorboards. Ooh, like reddish seats. Yeah. Oh, 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 we're moving a little. Either I have a dead wheel bearing or two or flat spotted tires or a bent wheel. Because there's definitely like a thump or vibration. I don't know. I wouldn't call it vibration. It's more of like a pulsing. Only does it at slow speeds. Once you get going faster, it goes away, which is why I think maybe it's a wheel bearing. It doesn't really make any noise. It just kind of pulses. 30 to 50 miles an hour is where it's the most prominent. Just a little tiny bit at really slow speeds. Like right now, you can kind of just barely feel it. We're gonna have to fix something. There's definitely something wrong. I still gotta replace that windshield wiper. I've replaced one of them because they were both screwed and the other one won't come off. So I don't know what's up with that. I have the blade. I bought one. I stopped by an auto zone or advanced auto or whatever. Excitement. Here it is. Excitement. I still have 12 and a half hours to go. So I'm not even halfway done yet. This sucks on the plus side these seats are actually fairly comfortable although i'm only like five nine five ten on a good day so i'm not a real big person that helps a lot uh really wide people these seats would suck the bolsters are gonna pinch your sides the other thing is uh because of the positioning of it if you start to slouch it really starts to hurt your back so you really you know got to sit up straight it, it basically wants you to be in a proper driving position okay well uh more sitting in traffic. All right, we're in Alabama and I still have 10 hours and 15 minutes to go. I'm hoping we can get through Mobile. Mobile? 
mobile, I don't know, mobile, 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 Alabama. I think that's how you say it, mobile. I'm trying to get through there before rush hour. It's currently a little after three o'clock and I'm about 30 minutes away. So I'll be 3.30 or so when I get to uh, Mobile. Because I've been stuck in Mobile many times at rush hour and it sucks. Right now it's just kind of trees and nothingness. Oh, and there's a donk in front of me. Yeah, look at those big old wheels. Probably like 24s, 26s. Traffic got pretty dense. It was uh, pretty good cruising for a while. I made up some time. Current ETA, 117. Oh, you bastard, cut me off. He doesn't even have a license plate. All right, well, I guess they do it different in Alabama. Yeah, about halfway now. Actually, a little bit more than halfway. So that's good, making some progress. I always thought this bridge was kind of cool when you're uh, on the, uh, I guess it'd be the east side of Mobile. But the only thought in my mind is every time I look at this, I look at all the like low land surrounded by water. I just think, man, if a hurricane hits this, it's all going under, right? Sadly, Google's let me know that there's already traffic. It's already got a five minute delay, so it's not terrible. Hopefully we can get through before it gets really bad. I think there's like a battleship up here too, isn't it? There's the battleship. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. I knew there was a battleship somewhere. Haha. <laughs> Almost downtown. I forgot there's a tunnel, but I think it's gonna be a lot of traffic, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to give you guys a good acceleration in the tunnel. This is disappointing. Dang it. Oh yeah, now we're slow. Slow. Well, that's a good place to break down. That sucks for you. See, this car is so sad without the f exhaust open. Yeah, sorry guys. So much for the acceleration run in the tunnel. Sucks. I wanted to be able to gun it for you guys. At least gotta get the valves to open once. There's a vet behind me, gave it a little tap. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> I got it. You gotta have little moments like that on your trip, otherwise it's just boring. And miracle of miracles, it's showing basically no traffic on this side, so. Nice. Let's make some good time. Everyone say it with me now. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 Yay, Mississippi! That's all I got for you, YouTube. Sorry. We're in Mississippi. It's funny because you're in Florida for so long. And then Alabama was like, I don't know, two hours? Not even? Not even take a gas? Oh, here we go. We're in Mississippi. I think we're in Mississippi for a little while, and then we're in Louisiana for quite a while. Well, we've got a pace car in front of that bro dozer. I was hustling, and all of a sudden I saw what I thought was a cop, but sure enough, it was. Oh, there he is. It's that blue SUV. Oh, oh, is he getting off? Please get off. I'd like to get back to committing low level crime. So funny how all of a sudden everyone just is going to speed limit. Well, close to the speed limit. Oh, 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 I think he's going. Yes. Resume crime. Bye bye. All right, we're in Baton Rouge, and there is a cool bridge that we're gonna go over. I know, this This is the things you look forward to on a 1400 mile road trip. You're like, ooh, a bridge, look it. It's so cool, we go over a bridge, oh yay. Oh, look at that bridge. That is kinda cool actually. We are almost to, uh, I can't remember the name of the city. It's the one with all the casinos. Anyway, uh, we're still in Louisiana. We're losing light, so this might be the last time I film that you can actually see me. Still have 
five hours and 20 minutes. 350 miles to go. ETA 12.45. I've shaved off some time, so that's good. I'm debating whether I'm gonna try and push through or stop. I'm gonna keep going until I'm tired, and then we'll see where I'm at. Good sunset, though. Well, YouTube, I made it home. It is 12.23. I would have gotten home about two, three minutes ago, but I just had the biggest scare of my, well, car life, I guess. So I was on the road that's only like two miles from our house, 55 mile an hour speed limit. I'm just cruising along at 55. I'm, I'm almost home, so I'm just taking it easy. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this deer walks out right in front of me. And I jammed on the brakes and swerved. I heard this loud bang and then like noise that sounded like marbles rolling on metal, right? It was just this horrible sound. And I thought, oh crap, I just whacked the deer. I thought for sure I hit it in this corner. I missed him. I, I think, I mean, I'm, I don't see any damage to the car. That's just dirt, right? Yeah, that's dirt. Okay. There's no, like, look, it's, the car is, you know, this is, 1450 miles of bugs but oh that's a good one i was like think i thought for sure i hit it and i was like great i just got this car and now i'm gonna have to get a new bumper and maybe a fender and god knows what else but what happened was all my camera gear went flying around in the car and started rattling around and making all this noise so that's what the noise was <laughs> I had one quick thought and then I'm gonna go to bed and then we'll go over the car tomorrow morning. I wanted to make it home in one night um, because I was like, you know what? What an experience to drive a Scud 20 straight hours, 1400 miles in one stint, just to say I've done it. It actually was not that bad as far as comfort. The seats are actually pretty comfortable. Again, for someone my size, if you're bigger, may God have mercy on your soul, but for me, it was great. Sometimes my legs would fall asleep just because of the, yeah, that was the only thing that kind of sucked. No radio, really. I was just playing music on my cell phone the whole time, which kind of was sucky. I was able to make it home because I knew I just had to get to Houston. If I made it to Houston, I knew I could get home. And the reason is because when you're doing these long road trips, when you're kind of in the middle of nowhere late at night, that's when it's really bad because there's nothing to look at and all you got is like a little bit of road illuminated by your headlights and that's it. There's no scenery, no nothing. But at least if I made it to Houston, I told myself, then at least I have a bunch of turns, cars, stuff to look at, whatever. It'll keep me occupied and keep me awake and that's what happened. Of course, then after Houston, there's like an hour and a half plus long stretch in the middle of nowhere between Houston and Austin. That part sucked. I'm gonna go to bed. I've been up since 4 a.m. I'm also very proud of myself. The highest estimate Google gave me to get home was 145. So I beat it by like an hour and a half. Yeah, hell yeah, I crushed that. And that's with all those stops and with all those delays. Yeah, I did pretty good. All right, we'll see you in the morning and then we'll go over this thing. Well, good morning, YouTube. I haven't had a, time, a chance to shower so forgive this i uh, i'm on daddy duty right now sneaking off real quick because megan is sick and then i'm flying out tomorrow so this has been a ridiculously busy weekend let me show you the good and bad about this thing all right so 2008 scud bought it with like 69 ish 100 miles here's the thing um this one was stolen and then wrecked while it was stolen but then it was put back together and actually put back together pretty good i'll show you the pictures of the wreck or at least the ones i got and you can see the front bumper was gone, the uh, passenger side fender gone. So they basically had to replace most of the front end, new radiators, all that sort of stuff. And kind of a typical front end crash for these cars. The good news is airbags did not pop and didn't seem to do really much else. All right, so looking at the car though, you can see it looks kind of yellow. If you, especially if you like go like this, right? If you look here to here, well, that's because of the PPF. The PPF is 10 years old. So that is going to be a problem. That needs to go bye-bye. And I'm scared to death that when we do that, it's gonna pull paint. So I'm gonna have to hire Brad. So this is super common, these little dots. 
on the scuds because of the carbon fiber lenses so those lenses off gas and create those little bubbles the wheels need to be refinished you know it's got scuffs you know just stuff normal stuff you can see the yellow ppf on the bottom that rocker yeah we need to get that fixed there's some corrosion here on this trim uh, there's some corrosion here on this metal grate you can see I think that's just from being in Miami. Like I mentioned in the video earlier, there's tint on the front windshield. That needs to go. We need to put like a UV block. Moving on to the engine bay. Actually looks really solid. Just valve covers are a bit dirty and dingy. Need to clean those up. I uh, got the full carb and everything, which is awesome. I need to get it up to date on maintenance. You can see signs that it's been a, a high humidity car. Those bolts in the front rust in high humidity environments. In Miami, this is uh, one of the downsides of buying a Florida car. You get some corrosion. You can see like that. that's kind of like just needs to be cleaned up. It's kind of dingy. Uh, corrosion on that, you know, that, that sort of stuff. That's all just, that's actually just because it's a Miami car, not because it was wrecked. More corrosion here along this stuff. You can see so I'm gonna probably try and remove this piece of trim, like sandblast it, refinish it. Inside is dirty as hell just because I just drove it. You can see there's like crumbs in the seat and stuff. But otherwise, interior is really pretty, pretty good. The dash is in perfect condition. There's like really no leather pulling. The window switches are like starting to go, so I need to fix those. Buttons just need to be like refinished. They've already been, sticky's already been taken care of. Yeah, we got a few things to sort out, but you can see it's really, in remarkably good condition, especially given that it was wrecked and I just drove it 1400 miles. So I'm, yeah, super happy with this thing. It's ridiculously awesome. So that was what was impressive to me is that there's really not a whole lot that's like scary about it. It's got, I mean, it needs stuff, right? It's definitely needing stuff to be done, but it's all really doable, easy stuff. So that's what we're gonna be doing in the next few videos or well, the next video is over time because I'm gonna own this thing for a little while. So if you wanna see that, subscribe we do appreciate that and like this video share it all that sort of stuff and stay tuned for more cool car stuff because we're gonna be playing with a scud and it's going to be sweet oh uh, yeah so a uh, quick update i was just reviewing the video of last night on the dash cam and i did i did hit the deer and it pushed in the bumper. So now that I'm looking at it carefully, there's a gap right here that wasn't there before and it's pushed in just ever slightly right there. It's, uh, oh yeah, look at, right there's a big old, it blasted a chip through, right through the PPF down to the core of it. Well, other than that, I must have just barely clipped it and that probably is why so i didn't think that that gap was that big when i bought it because i remember looking thinking oh like it got wrecked so that is because of the deer well son of a bitch it did i did hit the deer yeah oh yeah look at that gap there son of a bitch god damn it <sighs> man i'm just having some crap luck well i whacked a deer